In this video, I'm going to go over the configuration that I have set for the autocomplete plugins, which I'm using for writing LaTeX in NeoVim. So the first and perhaps most important of these is COC. So I have the GitHub page opened up here. This is a fairly vast plugin. There's just a huge amount inside of it. Um, and I'm not going to go through half of what it does, um, but I'm going to show sort of where I have it configured. So, of course, first I have, um, I'm calling the plugin here, um, and if we go to init.vim, um, let's go to this file, so this is the configuration file. Um, so this plugin includes a bunch of different extensions, and these are the ones that I'm using. So one for snippets, uh, pairs, flowterm, vimtech, uh, explorer, JSON and Yank. So um, just to demonstrate, so Explorer, I've demonstrated elsewhere, but if you do space E, um, I have it set to open up the Explorer. So this is just a little file tree which COC provides, and that's great. Um, I really like that this is a fairly basic file tree, does everything I need, um, and it already comes um, inside COC given this extension. So, so that's great. Um, there's other ones that are pretty small little additions, so like Yank. Um, if I do YY, it highlights the whole line. That's, I find, pretty convenient. Um, and also, if I do space, it's under Actions here, so A for the Actions menu, and then all the way down at the bottom, Y for Yank. This opens up, basically shows all the different things I have yanked, like the history of, of Yanks. Um, so that's nice, and then I can select some of them and drop them in. Uh, if I so like. Okay, so let's get out of that. Um, okay, so that's Yank. Um, okay, there's a bunch of other configuration I have set here, but the only bit that I'm going to actually think it's worth going through is um, this for Explorer. So this is basically what the standard, so when you open up the Explorer, space E, um, just how wide this is. Of course, you can change its width holding down Alt, and then you can do L to make it wider, or H to make it smaller. Um, but it's nice to have some standard width that looks pretty good on your display. So if you want to change that, uh, it's this number here, 50, that you change. Um, so that's that. Um, it is set for left side um, right now, so it's this 50 which counts, but if you want to switch to the right side, um, then it would be this 50. Okay, so that's that's a little bit about um, COC and how to modify it. Um, let's go back here. So another sort of auxiliary plugin is Dioplete, and I'm using this um, on the recommendation of uh, the guy who made Vimtech, so uh, Lervig, um, and it works nicely with the server for LaTeX. So basically when you're writing a LaTeX document, um, let's say, go to a LaTeX document, um, I don't know, say you're writing some LaTeX command like site. Um, so this is drawing on the language server for LaTeX and Dioplate Dio Dio play is nice with COC. Um, so that's, that's why I'm using that. Um, and I have, I think some fairly Minimal configuration, yeah, not very much. Okay, and this I've just cut and paste um, from from somewhere else. So, so this is just a little bit of uh, customization for for Dioplete um, calling calling tech. Okay, and let's go into let's see what's the next one. Okay, so the next yeah sort of category of autocomplete is um, snippets, uh, which is super useful for writing LaTeX documents. Um, there's a bunch of other snippet plugins you could use, but this is the one I found that works the best for, for LaTeX. And I am using sort of, I've, I started with a uh, sort of template um, which came from multi-snips for writing LaTeX files, but um, ended up customizing it pretty heavily. So to see that, um, I have it under inside which key, so you go space, and then it's under actions for A, and then if you go down to here, edit snippets, so S, it opens up this tech.snippets file, and these are all the different snippets that I'm using for, um, for 
providing LaTeX documents. Um, most of them are pretty standard, um, but some of them are a little bit special. Um, so I have, for instance, uh, let's do label align. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so this is custom snippet, um, and it calls this environment label align, which I like to use. Um, and this is something which I define um, in the top of all my uh, LaTeX documents. Let's do label align. Okay, yeah, here it is. So this is where that is coming from. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I could sort of define this special environment, maybe some central file, which all of my LaTeX documents point to, but um, it's nice to have these LaTeX documents sort of be uh, independent. So you could share it with someone else and they could build it without any auxiliary files. So, so that is uh, that. Okay, so otherwise many of these snippets are pretty standard. I've customized them a little bit to fit my needs, um, but, but that's that. Um, it's worth mentioning that given that I'm inside this configuration uh, project here, so I'm inside the NVIM folder and so on, um, I'll be able to find this tech.snippets file using control P, and then I can just search for it, tech.snippets, and open it up. Um, that's not true though, if I were to switch into another project. So here you can see sort of what files are inside this folder. So if I were to do control P and then search for tech dots, it's not gonna find the snippets file. Um, and so it's really for that reason that, you know, if you're writing a LaTeX document, you find yourself writing the same kind of, I don't know, environment or something just over and over again, you wanna feel like I, I should be able to make a snippet for that. Um, then you can easily jump right into um, editing that snippet. Um, and then you can add your snippet. You would then have to, okay, once you've added your snippet, you'd have to then reload. So you do space and then shift R right down here for uh, reload configuration so that it, it knows where to find it. Um, and then you can carry on using that snippet instead of having to rewrite the, the same lines over and over again. Okay, so that is a little bit about snippets. Um, yeah, anything else to say there? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, it's important that snips is in this path and that that sort of says where the folder is. So if you do space E, um, here's snips. So that, it's basically pointing, it's telling uh, Vim to look into this folder for the tech.snippets file. Um, so that's that's worth mentioning. Okay, so that is all I'm going to say about snippets. Um, okay, next is auto pairs um, and surround. So here's a, just a bunch of different plugins. So auto pairs, um, let's go into the yeah, LaTeX file. Let's go down a bit. Yeah, so say we're down here. Um, if I do open parentheses, then it creates a closed parentheses on the other side. Uh, if I put a space, then it puts a space on either side, and then I do like right arrow, or whatever. I um, so those, and then say I want to do um, I finished writing, then I do um, close parentheses. It hops me outside, you know. I carry on. Um, okay, so that functionality is all provided uh, by this auto pairs, and I think Vim sandwich is also required. Um, uh, for to, to get all of this to work nicely. Um, Vim surround is a little bit different. Um, I've demonstrated this also elsewhere. But say I want to surround, I don't know, the first four words. So I do space S and S, and then I say 4W, and then I say what I want to surround it by. Say I want to use, uh, maybe I want to make it italics, so I hit I. So then it puts italics around those. Um, okay, so how to customize all of this. Um, so let's go into this, let's go to auto pairs, uh, go to file. Okay, so these are all the different sort of auto pairs that I, I like to use. So um, for LaTeX in particular, you're pretty off, you know, it's pretty common to be using this um, back tick followed by a forward tick um, for single quote. And of course, two iterations of those would be double quote. Um, so that's that's one sort of important auto pair to, to flag. Um, and then you have you know all these standard um, 
parentheses and braces and so on. Um, and then also dollar signs. And this is for, you know, uh, creating inline math mode. Um, and then it's also useful to do, you know, or at least I, I like to sometimes do all of the same ones, but then with a space um, on either side. So I have a space on the other side. And just to cre create, you know, a little bit extra padding, um, sometimes it can be easier to read um, long strings of mathematics. So, so that is useful. Um, so if you need other ones or you don't need, you know, these, you can remove them. Um, so that's, that's, this is the file you do that in. Um, let's go back here. Okay, so this is for Vim surround. So when I surrounded those four words with italics, um, this is the line that did that. So it basically, um, it says, okay, when you're in a tech file, uh, it tells Vim surround that I will take whatever the text object is that you've indicated, and it will insert this text IT and wrap it in braces. Um, so pretty easy to reproduce this for, for different, different types of uh, surrounds that you like. So I have, for instance, this back tick and forward tick for single quote, so that's lowercase p q, um, and then uppercase q does two of them. I have italics bold. Um, I have that uh, types, type, you know, typewriter font one. Um, I used to have the um, small caps too, but I didn't use that one that much. And I find um, this one for wrapping things in set instead to be really useful, and I, I use it all the time. Um, and then corner quotes also uh, pretty useful, um, as well as dollar signs. So sometimes you want to like, oops, that you know, maybe you you wrote out some bit of mathematics and you're like, oh, you forgot to put inside dollar sign. So then you can select, you know, whatever it is. And then, um, yeah, let's just run through that. So say I hit, say I do like, uh, or by, uh, right arrow, uh, let's put some padding, say whatever, psi, right uh, arrow, and then chi, right? Okay. So all of that, um, should be inside dollar signs. So I can do, um, let's go back here. And then I do uh, shift S and then, so that basically tells surround, okay, we're ready to wrap it with something. And then I'll just do dollar sign and it puts the dollar signs around it. So that, that works great. Okay, so let's go back. So that is where you would edit all those different things. Um, if you need to add any others. Um, and that is it really, this Vim sandwich and Vim repeat. So Vim repeat basically allows you to, I don't know, say you, um, oops, say you, I don't know, wrapped a few words. So you do, I don't know, space SS and then two W with I made them italics. Um, so if you want to just, so now if I hit period, it'll repeat those actions. Um, it'll wrap two words with italics. Um, and so you wouldn't have that if you didn't have Vim repeat. Um, so pretty useful one. Um, Vim sandwich, I honestly can't remember exactly what it adds to auto pairs, but a useful auxiliary um, plugin. Okay, so those are all the different autocomplete uh, functions and hopefully it indicates where to edit. Um, or make changes to them um, to fit your needs. Um, one other sort of, I guess, falls under the category of autocomplete is uh, templates, which I have mentioned before, but let's just go into, so here if I do space and then under T, and all this is gonna do is this is gonna drop in some massive um, template, you know, for, for writing a different LaTeX document. Um, and so it's worth seeing where to edit those. Um, so if I go in to my config, I do control P, I think it's under just templates. Um, okay, so it's in this templates folder. Um, so nvim templates, yeah, okay, great. So let's go space E, here they are. Okay, so here's all these different templates I have. Um, you can edit those for yourself. Um, and then as far as where they get called, 
uh, they get called out by which key, but that is something which I will go over um, in the mappings uh, video, which I will make um, in a little bit.